Hello there guys, what's up, Son of Chelsea, back here again for another video for my Watford versus Chelsea review. The game ended nil-nil and kind of my feelings on it is a little bit meh, basically. Uh, I'm kind of left coming out of that game a little bit frustrated, uh, putting it in perspective, you know, our unbeaten run still goes on. At the same time, it is drop points and also you've got to look at the fact is... The goalkeeper, Watford's goalkeeper Gomez made a few brilliant saves from Costa and also from Ivanovic. So you've got to put that into perspective. Also, Courtois had to make some good saves. Uh, we never really looked kind of a shake at the back. I know Agarlo as well. You've got to take into account the quality he has. Also, at some points, Agarlo did look very dangerous for Watford. And I thought Dini and Agarlo and also the players that Watford have at the back, I thought were really good. They're a really well-drilled side. And you can see where they are on the table because of that. And I think anyone trying to think that we were going to go up there tonight at Vicarage Road and stroll an easy 3-0 victory... I think it's a little bit ludicrous. Also with our form, I, I was surprised with the team selection, to be honest. I was surprised William started, and I thought he had one of his worst games of the season, in my opinion. I just thought he didn't look there tonight. He was very ineffective with the ball. And also, I was just surprised, really, that Hazard didn't start, and, and he came on that late. Because when he came on, he seemed to have an effect on the game. And considering he got taken off and in the game against MK Dons, where he scored a goal, I thought the best thing to do was was, was start him. You know, I was, I was not surprised that Oscar started, and Fabregas, both of them because I think of Oscar's hat-trick, he's got a start, but still, I thought Oscar as well took a lot of time to get into the game. I was sort of surprised that I thought personally Oscar would have been taken off and then Hazard would have come on, but instead it was Matic that got taken off, which was a little bit surprising. Matic didn't have the best of games once again, but didn't have an awful game. I've seen him play worse, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm left out of this game mix and I don't want to give the impression that I'm happy or satisfied with a nil nil of Watford. That's not where Chelsea should be aiming for, definitely not, but... I'm just I'm looking at the game and I've seen more frustrating nil nil draws. I've seen games where we looked at and we should have been we should have gone out and buried a team. And you know I also look at it with the fact that you know it, we're kind of at this point where I think it's very clear that top four looks out of reach, but Chelsea still coming back into some form. It's just a, it's just a weird game to kind of analyse and as well nothing really happened in the game. In truth, there were no real clear cut chances uh, that kind of fell to anyone really. I mean Ivanovic, yeah. Uh, was, was probably the clearest of all. Costa as well, the header. But other than that, they were really half chances. Hazard as well, when he came on, had that chance. The ball fell to him and he just didn't expect, I think, the ball to fall to him. If he would have taken a, a lighter touch, you know, and just and just got it under control, I think he probably would have scored there and that would have been the winner. But I thought you got to give some credit to Watford as well. And I think it's more proof. I think people forget that in this league, pretty much now, every team has a player that you want on your team, a Garlo especially. It's more drop points, which I think we're going to look back on at the end of the season and think, well, if we would have won there, if we would have won there, you know, maybe we would have been able to put more of a challenge up for top four. But personally, I think top four is gone. I think if you look at the teams within the top four, I think those teams are set there. And I think pretty much most people expect that. But at the same time, you want Chelsea to continue winning, especially considering the last two games we had. And once again, what we haven't been able to win back-to-back -back Premier League games is just not good enough for Chelsea and we've got to start winning back-to-back -back games but I'm not as furious as others. I think also that the fact of the JT news um, which I'm going to kind of, as I said in my MK Dons review, but I'm really busy lately so I'm going to do the, the JT video and kind of give different points to it and you guys can watch it. Um, I think that didn't help as well and the, the fury towards the board as well didn't help. I don't think John Terry had a bad game. I thought he looked focused. Uh, there was lots of singing towards JT from the Chelsea fans who I thought once again were excellent tonight. And yeah, I'm just kind of left a bit meh. I mean, we do go up to the 13th, but going into the game on Sunday against Manchester United, we really need to pick up three points. We ha we can't we can't lose or draw that game. I think pretty much we have to go out there and win. But that's not going to be easy considering United look to be getting back in some form. They had a really good victory against Stoke last night. So for me, it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Also, I think Fabregas is playing a lot better for Chelsea. I think he is week on week looking back to where he was last season. I think technically with the ball, he's our best passer. The balls he's bringing through to Diego Costa are a lot better. And I thought Fabregas once in that second half kind of got more freer roll. I think I think he looked a lot better. So for me, Fabregas is definitely picking up his form. Also, just lastly, on Diego Costa, it was a bit of a shame that he got into those antics again. But for me, everything gets got overblown with Costa. And, you know, apparently Costa rejected the invite from, from British journalists to have an interview with him. And to be honest, I don't blame Costa because, you know, in a sense, when, when he does the stupid stuff and the really over-the-top stuff like he did earlier in the season with Arsenal, 
and you can pick up other cases where he should have got a red. Tonight he shouldn't have got a red. Maybe you could say two yellows at most, but it was stupid, just silly, petty stuff. And I think eventually when he got the yellow, I thought, well, that's that's his fault. But luckily in the second half, he kind of took that away from the game. I don't know if Hiddink took him to one side and said, listen, you got to calm down. And also we, we haven't had Costa against United whilst he's been at Chelsea. So that's going to be a big thing for us. And hopefully Costa can just get back to that. But he did look at two points. He looked closely to scoring. So that's that's. I guess a positive as well. He wasn't in, exactly inactive in the game and, and did nothing in it. He did look close to scoring. Um, but yeah, just that silly stuff that he gets involved with sometimes. There was nothing really much in the game. I'm sure from a neutral perspective, it was probably one of the less interesting games in the league. Uh, from a Chelsea point of view, it's two points dropped. It's probably not good enough. When, more when you look at it, once again, not back-to-back -back wins and we're not climbing up that table as fast and as rapidly as we want to. But at the same time, I think you've got to give some credit to Watford as well. I thought they defended brilliantly for most of the game. And uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts, guys, in the comments below of tonight's game, where you think this leaves us, who do you think needs to come into the side for the game against United on Sunday, which is a massive game, a very big game in the Premier League. So thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, at Son of Chelsea. And I'll see you again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's uh, definitely on the way home. You heard, I was listening to the cup draw and you get City out and then you hear that JT's leaving at the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit depressing, uh, especially when we've had Lampard, Drogba, Czech, uh, players who have basically been the spine of our team for the yeah. past decade. Uh, you know, it's especially JT because he's kind of the last one. And uh, we, a lot of Chelsea fans this season are worried that there isn't players within that squad who truly understand the club. Right. And there's been a lot of games this season